George and I decided to pitch Cogent Communications, ticker CCOI. Briefly, the company is an internet provider with a global reach. They're 100% facilities based, meaning that they connect their customers to their network through physical fiber optic cabling. Their network spans 58,000 miles across 47 countries. The company has two main reporting segments, on net and off net. On net revenues are derived from customers who are physically connected to their network, while off net Revenues are derived from customers who lack a physical connection to their network, in which case, case Cogent leases the last mile portion of the connection between the, their network and the end customer. On net revenues consists of two customer types, corporate and net centric. Corporate customers are typically less a, lessees of class A office spaces, mostly corporate head, headquarters, and net-centric clients include band bandwidth-intensive clients like streaming services and other content providers who buy IP services from their data centers. Off-net revenues are branch offices of their corporate clients. Onto my recommendation. The company operates in a somewhat niche market. Many of its peers are office REITs, which take on the risk associated with developing the property. Cogen instead purchases the, or leases the rights to the fiber from these REITs, and in effect, they avoid the development risk and maintenance costs of the fiber. This results in an easy to pivot network infrastructure that can easily keep up with changing technology. Additionally, Cogen offers a comprehensive portfolio of solutions, which positions them as a one-stop shop for commercial-grade internet protocol connectivity. They offer plans ranging from 100 megabits per second to 100 gigabits per second to their corporate customers. They use penetration pricing to onboard customers at low acquisition costs and realize a benefit when these customers have to upgrade to larger bandwidth plans as was seen in the work from home environment, which I'll go over later. The company has strong net centric positioning, hosting over 200 streaming services and content delivery firms. For the above reasons, it is recommended that the AIM Small Cap Equity Fund purchase shares of Cogent Communications with a price target of $73.91, representing a potential upside of 34.38%. On to my first driver, the work from home revenue shift. The properties most affected by COVID-19 are their branch offices, which comprise 19% of revenue, not major headquarters. Moving or closing a corporate office is a costly multi-year project with high penalties associated with prepaying the loans. This, this type of move does not happen in the short term. CCOI's core revenues, their on-net corporate customers, are relatively insulated from the pandemic lockdown because of their strong positioning as a total service provider. Their best-selling product, historically, has been the low-margin 100 megabyte per second plan that they onboard their customers with. Whether working from home or at the local coffee shop, employees launch Cogen's VPN and tunnel through their corporate firewall. In effect, 
They're still using cogent services no matter where they log in from. Pandemic lockdowns drove an acceleration in 100, in 100 gigabyte per, sec, per second plans, which provide a 200 per month premium and will drive a 200 basis point increase in operating margin over the coming years. At the beginning of the pandemic, 87% of their existing customer base had a 100 megabyte per second plan. In a single quarter, that metric dropped to 82%, creating a natural hedge against pandemic-related sales deceleration and a sizable opportunity for them to increase average revenue per user. In effect, any short-term deceleration in off-net sales facilitates an EBITDA margin expansions of expansion of about 200 basis points over the coming quarters. My second driver is strong cloud positioning. The market for internet trans transit is fiercely competitive with high barriers to entry. To succeed, an operator needs scale. This is evidenced by the total available market for global internet transit being static for 20 years at 1.5 billion. While Cogent maintains a presence in over 1,300 data centers globally, their network currently accounts for 25% of all video minutes streamed over the internet. Despite rapid market share growth, their net centric revenue has revenue growth has been muted. This is a result of the company sacrificing short term revenue growth numbers for market share. In effect, they're pushing out less efficient competition to consolidate the market through penetration pricing. They structure these contracts on a price per megabyte basis and are well positioned to experience an increase in revenue when even a single one of their 200 plus hosted companies undergoes viral growth, as was evidenced by the rise of Netflix and other streamers. My third and final driver is their shareholder focused business model. Cogent has a 15 year history of returning capital to shareholders. They've done this through returning $225 million in dividends and $625 million in share repurchases. Additionally, management has raised their dividend for 32 consecutive quarters at an average rate of $0.02 cents a quarter, bringing its current yield to just over 5.1%. While they do have a high payout ratio, I believe that this risk is offset by their low debt and $470 million in cash on the balance sheet. Income statement assumptions aside, this stock is currently trading at a 34% discount to their Gordon growth model.
touch on my valuation. In order to reach a fair value estimate for Cogent, a five-year DCF model was constructed. Using a terminal growth rate of 2% and a WAC of 7.15%, an intrinsic value of $78.29 was reached. A sensitivity analysis of plus minus 50 basis points on both the terminal growth rate and the WAC ranged from $65 to $78. Moreover, an EV to EBITDA relative value analysis was conducted using a peer average of 26.78 times and resulted in an intrinsic value of $66. I also conducted a dividend discount model using a dividend growth rate of 2% and a 6.17% cost of equity, a $73.43 intrinsic value was computed. Weighing the three models, 40, 40, 20, a price target of $73.91 was reached, representing a potential upside of 34.38%. Some of the risks surrounding this company are COVID-19, the pandemic caused major dislocations across a variety of industries and asset classes. 20% of their revenues are exposed to office closures, and any delay in the vaccine development could extend the decline in off-net sales growth. Second, they have a reliance on a single vendor. They purchase or lease almost all of their network infrastructure from Cisco Systems. Should a design or performance flaw arise, the company could be adversely impacted. Though they are downstream of Cisco customers, price increases upstream could imply lower operating margins, margins and invalidate part of our thesis. The third risk is leasing renewals. The company leases its optical fiber from several carriers. These leases, which are usually 15 years in length, may be abandoned at the end of the lease by the owner of the fiber. Loss in part of their network could result in service disruptions to their clients. Finally, to touch on their management. Dave Schaefer is the founder of CCOI and has served as the president and CEO since its inception. Prior to Cogent, he founded and operated PathNet, a successful broadband telecommunications provider. Sean Wallace is the current VP and CFO. He has been in this role since May 2020 and previously worked in the commercial real estate space, the venue for the Cogent business model. Cogent recently reported earnings on November 5th, and some of their key highlights included existing customers taking a cautious approach to new configurations, total revenue being up 3.1% year over year, and acceleration from the previous quarter, and EBITDA margins growing 150 basis points year over year, putting them on track to meet the 200 basis point annual target. In some new sales orders, customers reduced their ag aggregate number of satellite offices, reflecting the risk in their off-net segment. Overall though, we view Q3 results as in line with expectations and there were no significant changes to our price targets as a result.